welcome back. I'm Melinda Bigley and I'm a baby lock educator. Today I wanted to show you guys another fun thing in IQ um, that you can create for the upcoming Valentine's Day. I know it's New Year's Day that this thing will be probably posted, but um, it's never too early to start to sew for upcoming fun stuff. Obviously, if you got grandkids or your husband, whatever doesn't matter who it is this is just another fun little project for you okay so what we're gonna do is we're going to go into IQ designer and you can probably tell we're gonna go to the shapes key and select our heart I'm gonna size this down and as you know when you go into IQ you're going to have a um, the default fill is going to be the satin stitch and the default line property is also satin stitch this first heart i'm going to leave uh, satin but i am going to change the color so i am going to pick a color that hopefully you can see but i do try to as somebody mentioned to me and i really didn't think about it as i create this stuff i am assigning colors to it because that affects how i feel about the design i never even thought about it but if i leave these uh, and this is just me, so you may not need to do that. If I leave them in the default color, I'm, I'm not going to look at the design in the same way. So if you're like that, go ahead and assign the colors as you're going. If not, don't worry about it. Um, so I have applied a pink satin to that right there. What I want to do now is put in a... Um, now, you can either make this an applique by doing a couple of things. I've got tons of videos on applique in our, um, in the library of stuff in, um, YouTube. But if you want to stitch this out with a satin stitch, you can do that too. So, um, I'm going to go ahead. I don't, I don't even know what I used in the other color scheme that I showed you guys in the beginning, but we're going to place that right in there. So we've got a darker pink and a lighter pink for the, for the satin stitch. <clears throat> so now what I want to do is I want to bring in another heart and I want to decrease the size here. And this placement is entirely up to you, but what you'll find is that it's going to touch at the top before it does at the bottom, obviously because of the way uh, the heart is, um, it, where its points will connect. I'm going to leave it about like that. Uh, and I do want to do a candle wicking. So I'm going to grab the candle wicking and a white. You're not going to see the white right now. Actually, I have to grab that paint bucket to apply it. You're not going to see the white right now, but you will in a minute. Okay. So once again, you can either do this as an applique, which means you would just do a, a, a placement straight stitch and a tack down straight stitch in addition. And then you wouldn't do that um, satin stitch in there. So as you can see, it doesn't have any letters in it yet. We're gonna do that in the embroidery section and add it to that. So I, I highly recommend saving things when you're creating in, in, in um, IQ because then you don't have to go back and recreate if something goes wrong. Okay, so what I wanna do here actually is I wanna scroll through and get to my candle wicking and I wanna enlarge those. Not too much because this does come to a point here and if you enlarge these candle wicking stitches too much, they overlap one another, and, and I wanna to try to avoid that. So I'll probably bring that down to about there and see how that looks. So then we'll preview that and see what it looks like. And then you can use this uh, preview button right here to actually look at it. And I'm happy with that. I actually like the look of, of uh, the size of those candle wicking. Now you can leave the colors any way you want. Like I said, I'm actually, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking I might want to change that pink satin stitch to white, um, but I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so let's go set and let bring it in there. And you can see that better in that light right there. But now what we want to do is we want to add, and I'm going to show you something um, that if you haven't used before, try to add a little something different. This is my favorite font on the um, Solaris 3. This is, was actually added in the last upgrade when they, uh, when this became a uh, Solaris 3 and they came out with the, we came out with the um, vision, I think it's the, the vision or the visionary, whatever we call it. Um, they added this font, so we got that. I love this one. So let's go to edit, let's go to the colors. 
I'm going to grab just the first color in the word and I'm going to hit that three spools. And then I'm going to go in and grab the white and apply that all the way down. If I had left it with, with just the one, it would not have applied that. I can just change one at a time. But in this case, I want, um, I want to make it quicker, so I'm going to just change it all at once. So now what I want to do with that is not only move, but also size the word. Sometimes you kind of need to place it in a better spot so that it looks more centered um, when you're creating it. And that's just however you eyeball it. So I'm happy with that. But what I want to show you too is just a fun little thing. We're going to go to add, we're going to go to three again, and then we're going to scroll all the way down here to these tiny little letters. Okay. What these are for is they're what I use them for. They're for whatever you guys want them to be, but they're tiny. I like to put dates on things if it's something I want to remember or it's a gift or something like that. So um, let's go ahead and select, we'll put the, the new date on that and we'll say set. Okay, so it's really tiny, tiny right there. But what I wanna do, it's highlighted so we can move that now. And then I'm gonna move that all the way to the bottom. And these can be placed wherever you want to place them. That's entirely up to you. I'm gonna just kind of give it a little bit of a twist here, quite literally. And then I will scroll in so that you can see it, but I do wanna change the color on that as well. So the last thing you add is at the bottom of the stitch out. And if you need to change the order of things, then that's, that's, a, that's a different button. Okay, so as you can see, I didn't hit that three, um, the three spools, so it only applied that to the one, the one number. Okay, so we are okay. So if I scroll in on this, if I can get there that enough, you can see. And I don't like actually the way that that's sitting. So let's do this. Let's, let's hone in on this so that you can really see that better. As you can see, I've got to select through this to, to uh, highlight. I'm not sure if that's highlighting that or not. I think that's highlighting. I can't really see the red color on that, but let's see. Let's go do a rotate. I think that date is highlighted. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that down in the, in the so if 10% if is too much because it's not giving you that some symmetry you're looking for, use the 1% the or use 0.1, and then you'll be able to, especially on these little things, you'll be able to fit that better in there. And I'm just looking for symmetry from the two and the four. Obviously the other numbers are right in the middle, so they don't really matter. Okay, so then we've got the date in there. And you can place that any way you want. You can stick it up here. It's entirely up to you. But that's just something to give you another little fun thing to work with. Um, and I'm probably going to get questions. You can use a um, 7014 needle on this if you want. I don't have any problem with a... Or a 7511. I don't have any problem with a 9014. But sometimes it's better to increase your um, thread number, which is the opposite of the diameter. So if I, what we do when we're stitching um, embroidery, you're stitching with a 40 weight and a lot of times a polyester. I would recommend to switch to a 60 weight for these tiny little numbers because the diameter is smaller. So in, when it comes to thread, it's opposite of what you might think. The larger number, the smaller the diameter of the thread. And it, when it comes to needles, it makes more sense. The larger the number, the larger the needle. Okay, so in this case, we would want to decrease the size of the, the thread while also, actually, in this case, decreasing the size of the needle. However, like I said, when I've used a 9014 on these, I have no problem. Um, on, I'll give you guys an honest, and this is just me. Somebody else may disagree with me, and they've had different experiences, and, and, and that's totally fine. I have no need for a whole bunch collection of all different needles and I've been doing this a really long time. I pretty much embroider with 90 or uh, 90 14s and let me just show you real quickly so you can see. My go-to needles when I get them from work I get them through Baby Lock um, and your Baby Lock dealer can order these but I use class A uh, 75 11s and 90 14s for the most part. If I'm sewing I'm going to use a universal 80. Let's see if I have 
So I have a universal 8012. That's what I usually stitch with if I'm sewing. Sometimes I won't even switch it out if I'm just stitching something real quickly. And I, I, I bet I'd be hard pressed to be able to tell the difference in what needles I use. And I think that's why. When you're new to embroidery, there's a, a thousand things to think about. Stabilizers, needles, threads. You will keep at it because you will come up with your own recipe that helps you pretty much stick to the same kinds of things and lessen the amount of um, confusion and lessen the amount of stuff you're buying in the sense that you might find that 9014 works all the time. I, I know plenty of gals that say they never change it from a 9014. If I'm stitching on organza, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to because I want that penetration into a fine sheer fabric to be lessened with the diameter of the needle. Can I tell the difference between a 9014 and a 7511? Probably not, but I do it anyway, okay? So that's just a little bit of an extra tip for you. So let's close this out. And this would look super cute with a metallic faux leather or a shiny faux leather on a tote bag. I might actually stitch this out. I think I'm gonna save that. Okay, so um, like I said, I think this is going to come out on New Year's Day. So happy, happy New Year to all of you. I am so grateful for you, for all the comments and for you guys telling me that these little videos are helping you out. This one's droning on and on, so I apologize. Um, but I really do appreciate getting your feedback and knowing that this is um, something that's assisting you. That really makes my day. So I hope everybody's feeling good. Some of our family is feeling better. Some of us are not feeling better. So um, prayers to all of you if you've got that going on. I know I've heard from a lot of you who have some things going on and I'm um, thinking about you and praying for you. So blessings to all of you. Have a wonderful day, everyone. If you haven't joined So Blessed Quilting and Embroidery Facebook group, please do so. You guys hear me say this every time, but we're getting a lot of you in there, and it's a whole lot of fun to have um, our YouTube gals becoming friends, real friends with our sewing group in uh, Facebook. So that makes me, nothing makes me happier than seeing you guys getting along and joining the same groups. And we've got tons of groups in Facebook, honestly, that are fabulous. Um, and I am a baby lock gal. So the baby lock educators just do a bang up job bringing you the education you need to use these wonderful machines. So um, yes, and there was something else. Oh, I'm supposed to say, Terry and Abigail have sworn me to say that um, please also subscribe like and share. Apparently those are the three things that I'm supposed to say and there you go. So I don't usually even mention that but I think you guys are doing that so I really appreciate it and somehow with the YouTube um, the algorithms it makes a big difference and they'll be able to push the videos out to more people. So that would be great. All right everybody thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and be safe and I will see you guys very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.